Hello and welcome to Emergent Soul Conversations, the podcast promoting self-love and awareness with the hopes of developing sisterhood and community. We will be discussing concepts that pull on the hearts of today's woman. I'm your host, Karen Elaine, and I will share my life experiences along with inviting others to sit down with me who inspire me and also have a willingness to share their soul's journey. This podcast will give us meaningful and intimate conversations that'll help us create a life by design and not default. If this is your first time listening in, I thank you. Now on till today's episode. Good afternoon, and I'm so excited uh, today for the Emergent Soul Conversation podcast. We have our first guest, uh, Dr. Vicki Johnson, and this is a memorable moment for me because when I launched Emergent Soul in 2014 and tried my hand at blog talk radio with the Emergent Soul radio show, my first guest again was Dr. Vicki Johnson, so I'm happy to introduce her to you today. Dr. Vicki Johnson is a transformational speaker, chaplain, best-selling author of 12 books, and the CEO of Soul Wealth LLC. Her most recent book, Soul Wealth, Finding Vision, Compassion, Authenticity, Abundance, and Legacy in the Midst of Chaos, was just released in 2019. I'm going to ask her about that because I'm wondering if that was a she had a vision of COVID coming and knew that we were going to need support in this time of chaos and this pandemic. She also leads an online community with lots of in-person engagement. She's a mentor and leader and builds, helps people build their own tribes and grow their own businesses. Dr. Vicki is a graduate of Howard University She's a mentor to women to, and teaches them to break up the status quo in their lives, to be great in the mirror first and then amazing in the marketplace. Her mission and passion is to strengthen relationships among women by sharing life strategies for the next level results. You can visit her online at www.vickijohnson.com. Welcome, Dr. Vicki Johnson, my soul wealth sister. How are you? I am well, Karen. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm very well. Very well, thank you. And very excited that, uh, again, you are my first, so we'll have to keep remembering that, my first uh, guest on Emergent Soul Conversations. And I, I love that because you were here from the beginning and now you're here from the beginning again. So thank you. So you're what welcome. have you been up to, my friend? Ooh. Well, <laughs> I have been first practicing radical self-care, which is radical self-love. So making sure that I stay in a place of rest and a place of recovery when I need it and a place of peace so that I can serve the women who I am called to serve, but I can't give away what I don't have. So I've been up to taking care of me, particularly over the last 18 months or so, you know, since the pandemic and the shutdown, I've been working from home, blessed to work from home, mm -hmm. blessed to still be employed. I work for my local government and the mayor's office. So we've been really busy. <laughs> no, no shortage of tasks to get done. And just geographically speaking, I live in the and work in the nation's capital. Mm -hmm. So we had the most recent presidential inauguration and all of the other activity that has been going on here. And so that has kept me busy. And then there's Soul Wealth, mm -hmm. serving the women that I mentor through the Soul Wealth Academy, my Soul Wealth tribe, speaking on different virtual platforms, serving as a chaplain for families who've been grieving. So I supported over 35 families in 2020 who lost a family member predominantly to COVID-19 and others to other things. But the pandemic 
slammed the world and slammed our country and slammed our community. And so in my role as a chaplain, I have been providing grief support for families and individuals and still doing my soul wealth one-on-one sessions for my clients. Mm -hmm. And I most recently resumed the soul wealth radio show, which is a daily show. Mm -hmm. So I have been interviewing some amazing people to include you, Karen, and thank you again for being a guest on my show. So that's what I've been up to. And, and the gift of 2020 to me was hiking. I started hiking. I am a beach baby <laughs> by, by lineage and tradition. And I grew up in South Florida. However, I now live in the mid-Atlantic. And so to stay well and to stay emotionally healthy, to decompress and have time of reflection and replenishing my own soul, I started hiking about eight to 10 miles a week. So that's what I've been up to. That's not a lot at all, is it? (laughs) (laughs) You have been up to so much and you're reading my my mind because my first question you said, I leaned in, you said radical rest and recovery and taking care of yourself. And, And I was going to ask, you know, how are you doing that? And what are you doing, especially in this time of chaos? And I have seen you promote uh, your hiking adventures uh, on Facebook, as well as getting out near into nature. So tell my listeners, because one of the things that I focus on uh, with the Emergent Soul Conversation is taking care of yourself and making sure you're refilling your cup and you do so much and you're giving so much to others. But share with us, Dr. Vicki, as far as what and how does spending time in nature, what does that do for you and why it's did it become such an important practice to to do that in your life, especially during this time right now? Listen, nature is medicine. Mm. (laughs) I'll just start there. Nature is medicine. Out, you're socially distant because there are not a lot of people hiking the trails. There are people out there, but not a lot of people. And I think it's an overlooked opportunity to be out in nature. So in Maryland, there are exquisitely beautiful state parks and thousands of miles of hiking trails. And so I got invited to go. Actually, my daughter was hiking and invited me to go with her. And after I went with her that first time, I just kept going because my body (laughs) then began to crave it. Mm -hmm. And you can be out on a trail for hours and it not feel like hours, just walking. And so then I began to listen to the birds and feel the wind and the sun kissing me on my forehead and the water, you know, the the rivers that I discovered and the waterfalls that I discovered. Like there's always a different discovery and it it surprised me. Mm -hmm. What surprised me is that I found solace Mm -hmm. and peace in the woods. Mm -hmm. And that shocked me because I'm a beach girl. Mm -hmm. I want to be sitting in the sand, you know, running and playing in the waves and just did not have the opportunity to do that as I had planned. I had several vacations planned last year and I just started feeling better. Raven, how are you? And you know, losing um, the frustration of other people, quite frankly, because I'm a homebody. So being in the house wasn't a problem for me. But because I was supporting so many people, I needed a place to go mm. to recover. And that became the hiking trails for me. So nature is medicine. That is beautiful. And I, I can very much relate. And sorry about that in, middle interruption right there. Seemed like someone else wants to get into our conversation. But nature is medicine. And the, the pandemic has impacted so many different people in so many different ways. And we had everyone had to learn to do things differently. 
And I can say that that's one of the reasons I started walking also. And I didn't, I was never a huge walker before, but for me, it was an opportunity to get out, not have to worry about having a mask on because I could navigate the process. If someone was coming close to me, I can go on the other side of the road and just be a part of nature. So I love that. And I applaud you for, you know, doing hiking and, and finding that time to rejuvenate yourself and, and, and keep moving forward. So as I was reading your bio, Dr. Vicki, um, I, number one, I didn't know that you're an author of 12 books. I knew you were an author and I knew you had penciled a few books, but 12 books. <laughs> so 12, and then, you know, so congratulations. That's not a small feat at all. That's a huge accomplishment. And then insightfully, you just launched a book in August of 2019 entitled Soul Wealth, Finding Vision, Compassion, Authenticity, Abundance, and Legacy in the Midst of Chaos. That title preempted COVID. So I'm just curious, you know, as a chaplain, as a woman who, who you know, who is very much, you know, a believer, was this book placed on your heart knowing or, or having that gut feeling that something was coming, that this would be an opportunity to have people have a word of almost like a guide map to help them direct their lives and with COVID on its heels? Or how, how did you come up with that title and, and, and how, how I'm sure it's made an impact with so many people with this pandemic, which you know, for, for many generations, no one could have assumed, you know, you see those memes, what would you be doing five years from now? I am positive that in 2016, no one said that they would be social distancing. No one would say that, oh yeah, there's going to be a pandemic that we're going to be going through. <laughs> yeah, so it was, it, it, it happened very serendipitously. It took me about two and a half, three years to write that book. So while the book was released in August of 2019, just in time for March or February, March of 2020, I had been writing the book since 2015, 2016, yeah. just taking my time over the course of the time. I sensed, yes, that something was coming. I had no idea that it would be a pandemic. Mm -hmm. I knew something was coming. And then I, you know, made the decision to not worry about it. That wasn't my business. What mm -hmm. it was, my responsibility was to follow the nudges, to follow the, what I call divine arrows and to receive the inspiration and write. And that's what I did. The title came to me. It was a divine download. I wrote it down, put it to the side, and I just started writing the book, basing it on the tenets, the five tenets of soul wealth, which is vision, compassion, authenticity, abundance, and legacy. Mm -hmm. The result of those five things is clarity. When you have clarity, you have inner peace mm -hmm. because you're not frustrated by distractions. You're not derailed by things that are not a part of your purpose or your passion. And consequently, regardless of what is going on externally, chaos, pandemic, police brutality, mm -hmm. political uprisings, presidential campaign, presidential inauguration, regardless of all of those things, I have peace internally, even when there's not peace around me. Mm -hmm. And it just became a wonderful prescription, prescription for people. You know, they were reading the book anyway. And the sales have been consistent, which I'm grateful for. Mm -hmm. uh, it, so yeah, it was an assignment for this time. I didn't know that God knew that. And that's what makes it perfect. And, and that just is perfect. And, and thank you for following those divine arrows in taking up the task of completing your assignment, which was given to you. A lot of times people will not listen to those divine voices and that divine downloads. And um, definitely this was needed uh, for this period of time. So thank you for listening. 
And that inner peace that you're talking about is so critical in everyone's lives. And I have just learned even my own that no one is, imp no one is important enough to disturb your inner peace. Nothing is important enough to make you lose your joy and peace. So that is just so powerful, Dr. Vicki, and, and you're, you're right on with that. So I'm, I'm thanking you for soul wealth and those tenants that you have that helped build soul wealth. So thank you. So for those of, uh, you know, you're new to some of my, my audience, um, tell us why soul wealth. And I know you just explained your tenets, but why was soul wealth important for you to develop and share your message to, to women? Well, my message to women is that there is tremendous power in sacred sisterhood. Soul wealth was birthed as a result of a TED talk that I did in 2014 called The Power of Sacred Sisterhood, which is when women connect collaborate and create community, the result is soul wealth, which is vision, compassion, authenticity, abundance, and legacy first in your life. And then in the lives of others, you can't give away what you don't have. And so it was birthed while I was preparing for that TED talk that I did that's now out there and available for people to watch. And after the TED talk, the downloads just kept coming and so wealth just kept evolving. So I have a home collection of products to help you create sacred space at home. I have soy candles and room sprays and scented shea butters, all infused with essential oils, all natural ingredients. I have t-shirts, I have hats, you know, I have a soul wealth mentorship Academy where I mentor women, other women leaders who are either emerging and some who are experienced and seasoned. So for them, I provide more of a spiritual support for those women leaders who are, you know, experienced and have been out there. And I also support other women who are creating and leading their own communities. The other expansion of Soul Wealth is the radio show. Prior to Soul Wealth, I was on the radio for seven years every day wow. doing a segment called I'm Every Woman, which was an inspirational moment to inspire, <clears throat> encourage, and empower women. And that evolved into the Soul Wealth radio show, which now again is a daily show on dcradio.gov. And then the on-demand episode are available on all podcast platforms. So my mandate at the end of the day is to flood the earth with soul wealth. Mm -hmm. And the scriptural inspiration comes out of third John. And the scripture says, and I'm paraphrasing, God desires that we prosper and be in good health, even as our soul prospers. Your soul is the seat of your emotions. Mm -hmm. So the translation of that is if your emotions are not healthy, neither is your life, regardless of your other successes, your accomplishments, your accumulation of assets, you can have all the things you want. Mm -hmm. But if your emotions aren't well, if you are not cultivating your emotional intelligence to understand how to navigate times like we are currently living in, then you're in a dangerous place. It's an unhealthy place. It's a dysfunctional place. Mm -hmm. And the risk is when you don't have a healthy way to process your emotions, you are then susceptible to other diseases. diseases. Disease is simply the lack of ease, right. which is a lack of processing in a healthy way your emotions. And when you don't do that, it turns literally into high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, all these other things. So processing your emotions is crucial to having a healthy life. And again, that is what led me to start hiking mm -hmm. so that I have a way to filter and process my emotions. So I am not holding any negative energy because everything is energy 
any negative energy in my body so that I can stay strong and be able to bounce back and keep my immune system strengthened and, you know, live a prosperous, fruitful, peaceful life. That's what soul wealth is all about. That that is just beautiful. That is just beautiful. And you express it so beautifully and you're so right. Uh, Dis-ease, lack of inner peace, not comfortable in your own skin and not live, making your soul thrive. All that does is a disaster for destruction and your own personal destruction. And we always, we both say you can't give what you don't have. So therefore it's important to refill, as you says, be radical, recover and make sure you're doing the right thing for the right reasons. That's just awesome. Dr. Vicki, it's been amazing having you share your, share my platform today and telling everyone about soul wealth and how to create a life uh, full of balance, rest, recovery, and as well as being a service. Uh, before we end, end today, um, I want you to, if you wouldn't mind giving my listeners a, your word for 2021, uh, what, would that, what would that one word be or what would your, your message be to those as the year just started not too long ago uh, a word of encouragement to keep moving forward. What would that word and message be for, for those listening today? Overflow. Mm. That's my word for this year. Overflow. Overflow. That is beautiful. because that is that is the source of my capacity. Mm. I give from my overflow. Mm. When I don't have anything in the saucer then that means what I do have left is for me. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to stay in overflow so that I have something to offer others. Because when you give people what's for you, that is when you become depleted, mm -hmm. you become resentful, yes. you become angry, frustrated, and unproductive. So my intention every day is to stay in overflow. When I need to shut down, I do. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have a lot of social media during the day. I don't have a lot of television on during the day. It's either quiet or I'm listening to music and I am head down, focused, working and being very intentional about how I am spending my energy budget <laughs> on a daily basis, you know, because I want to be fruitful and on purpose and intentional as much as possible. That is beautiful. And that is a great word for 2021, but the intention and the spirit behind that. And a great reminder is you can't give what you can't, don't have, and you can't give what you're barely getting by. It has to come from a place of overflow, which means you need to be productive, produce resources on an abundant level to keep moving forward. Thank you so much, Dr. Vicki Johnson. Please share with everyone. I will post your bio, uh, in the podcast information, but tell everyone how to get in contact with you and how to follow you uh, on your platforms. Sure, thank you. My website is vickijohnson.com. I am all things Vicky on most social media platforms. They can subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is all things Vicky Johnson. And Vicky is V-I-K-K-I. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. And this has been a beautiful, this time with you has been very beautiful as well as inspirational and motivational and just great resource of information. Um, so everyone just remember emergent soul and being in overflow and abundance today is our message for today is don't merely exist in life, but live life most abundantly. Thank you so much, Dr. Vicki and everyone have a wonderful afternoon. Take Thank care. you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Emergent Soul Conversations. Join me next time to gain more insights on how to live a life by design and not default. If this was your first time tuning into the show, please make sure and hit the subscribe button below and follow me on Instagram at Emergent Soul. Remember, what happens to you does not define you. Your Emergent Soul.